you know, with all of the angst that we have in our world today, what can we do to reduce the anxiety? And being energy independent for America is something that's really important. Um, a small uh, hot chai. I like their tea. Um, if it weren't so cold, I'd probably be getting their fresh fruit smoothie. That's my favorite. That big ball of hydrogen that comes up every morning that we celebrate is what created the heat and the gravitational pressures necessary to form those energies millions of years ago. And we're using it at rates that we've never used it at before in the history of humankind. And we, we can't expect our children or our grandchildren to wait a million years to replenish those energy sources. So how can we short circuit that, that electrical connection? The answer is we can use solar panels and wind, geothermic energies, hydroelectric, that all allow us to use renewable energy sources. I'm driving around today talking to people who share my commitment to environmental transportation. And they're doing more than talking about it. They're changing a few things about the way they live that make a difference. I should be paying attention. First, I'm headed up the road to visit Nick. What did I do here? Yeah, so there's their house right there. See the solar? Uh, I'm connected to the grid, so my solar electric system comes through that inverter, that white box on the wall there. Uh, it converts DC power to AC power, and then it feeds my breaker box. So as long as I'm making electricity with my solar electric system, it's feeding my house. If my house doesn't have enough demand, it actually turns my electrical meter backwards and it goes out on the grid. So I'm, I'm grid tied, I don't charge batteries or anything yet. <laughs> so we've got a 1.2 kilowatt photovoltaic system. Yeah. And how, how much later did you do the solar water? Well, that was a couple of years. Uh -huh. And you know, it's a little overcast. Uh, earlier this morning, the sun was kind of nice, but you're still being pretty productive uh, with the cloud cover that we have sure. right now. A, a solar system runs off of photons. It's a photovoltaic system, so it runs off of light, not heat. Uh, even on a dark night when I've got a full moon, my system will be working. I'll be making electricity. Now, when we first put in this system, this cost us about $10,000 altogether. But there were some grants that we got, brought it down to about six. Now, the same system, if you bought it today, would probably cost you a couple grand. You know, so the prices have significantly dropped. It's a viable investment, and especially with an electric car. <laughs> Now I'm making fuel. <laughs> now that's how that's how you get rich. Yeah, buy that's, high. That's and... how you get rich. <laughs> buy high and <laughs> use forever. <laughs> Heated seats. You bet. We crank those babies up. You're out at the La Crosse County landfill as the sustainability coordinator. We started talking about what we could do with the methane gas out there. Uh, we did a test on the gas. Turned out it was actually a really high quality. Good gas. Yeah, good gas. There are a group that talked about how they could use it, what they could do with it, and lo and behold, we created this program that turned a $50,000 a year deficit into a $200,000 a year income. Uh, our landfill gas that they're using to uh, power and heat their buildings uh, has turned Gunderson's on Alaska campus into the first healthcare institution nationwide that is 100% supplied by a renewable fuel. This is something that we just threw away. It was just a waste. And now we're turning it into an income. So we're coming into the Gunderson campus here. And this is the building behind this structure here, where it all happens. Should we be going over there and get our flu shot next? <laughs> I suppose we could. <laughs> See that pipe comes right up along here. Uh -huh up into this uh, building right here, and that's where the engine is. And so the electrical energy and heat that you're using to heat these facilities is all being produced all right, right, right here. here. Yep. It makes real economic sense to invest in this stuff now. 
And especially when you're talking about being prepared for any kind of natural disaster. I mean, if the grid goes down for one reason or another, if there's a, a storm of some type and your power goes out, I've got power. Yeah. I've got fuel, you know, so I can actually be doing everything that I want to do. I've got heat, I've got electricity, I've got food. You know, that's what prepping is all about. <laughs> and us zombie preppers, that's what we do. There is so much beauty to enjoy in the Driftless area. The glaciers missed us, so the terrain is varied with bluffs, the big river, smaller rivers, deep valleys, coolies, and hills. A lot of us who live here have a deep love of the land, nature, and the environment. Next, I get to meet two of my favorite people in Decora, Jim and Barb Dale. Hope they let me buy them lunch. I'm going to try getting out of the Oneota Co-op without buying fudgy oat bars. Our family did this mural this summer, and partly because uh, you know we're naturalists. We love the outdoors and we love the natural world, and so that's why we're we got solar panels. That's why we drive fuel-efficient automobiles. So we produce enough in the summertime that then in the wintertime when the days are short and you know occasionally we get snow on the panels uh, we don't produce quite as much and then we take our credit back from what we overproduced in the summer you know and obviously our automobile is still hybrid but uh, last summer for example we filled it with gas about the 24th of June and we never filled the car again until the middle of October and so we went 1,200 miles on one fill. We can do all our in-town driving on the electric. You can even do it with one hand. <laughs> one difficulty of this driveway is that we have to turn slightly so as not to drive into the garage. Uh, you wouldn't want to ruin your artwork. <laughs> Nor my car. <laughs> <laughs> This section. is the newest section of the Luther uh, thing. They decided to double it or something like that. So this is the new section that they put in. This is a very large. It's big, yeah, it's Especially a big layout. Especially when you think that you've got the other one over here, too. You know, solar is really coming in. I think, you know, Decora has an enormous amount of solar. They've got more solar per capita than any town in Iowa. I didn't turn the car off. You tend to forget those things driving electric, don't you? I do. I've done it many times. <laughs> See, I'm thinking something like either here or down off the corner uh -huh, right. where that level two charger would go. And What kind of sprouts were you looking for? This is the farm is that the she farm. likes. Okay, yeah. yeah. She does a green... Um, Moving in the morning, yeah. A few years ago, I made a film about alternative fuel vehicles. I talked about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles back then, and that option is closer today than ever. I hope in my next film, I'll be driving a fuel cell vehicle, the Honda Clarity. I love the name Clarity. What could be more clear than driving a vehicle with zero tailpipe emissions? I'm taking a few moments to charge up. It's easier to use than a gas pump. Organic Valley is one of a growing number of businesses and agencies that have charging stations for their team members and visitors. I made an unscheduled visit to my friend Cecil and Sonia's house. To my recollection, it's the first certified passive home in Wisconsin, and it's right here in Viroqua. We're heading to a visit another Viroqua couple, Kathy and Calvin. They're using wind, solar, geothermal, and permaculture. But it's great. We, we have, we've had a month now of, uh, of plugging in our car and we're still producing 
quite a bit extra. When did you guys uh, put in your, your solar? You know, the first four panels came in in 2008, and then we added two more a couple of years later, and then two years ago, that third, the third array. Mm -hmm. And we did the third array in anticipation of, of getting a plug-in. And I see you have a solar water system here. 100 tubes encased in vacuum, filled with uh, dry coal that uh, the sun heats up, and uh, a small motor keeps it circulating. It goes into the house and out of the house. And it works like a dream. The floor never gets below 61 degrees. Okay, we just unplug and close it. You were a professor at the University Chicago. of Illinois at Chicago. Yeah. And that's where I met Kelvin. Well, he's been interested in uh, global warming and climate change for many years. He got into it early. And I must have heard a hundred lectures, let's say, on <laughs> climate change and peak oil and finally I started getting nervous <laughs> but but what are we going to do about it besides talk about it mm -hmm. I have a shorthand for permanent agriculture or permanent culture and it it basically involves using scientific design principles based on nature to design systems where animals and housing and humans and plants uh, support each other, work together uh, to create a sustainable system. One of the catchphrases in it that we particularly like is the problem is the solution. I'll give a good example. We, uh, on our upper terraces, we were growing strawberries that went crazy. They, uh, they were trying to colonize the whole place. Uh, on our lower lowest terrace, the apron of our lowest terrace is supporting a very, very uh, robust um, colony of weeds. And so we were trying to get rid of the weeds. And then we thought, well, maybe since these strawberries are so um, are so rambunctious, uh -huh. why don't we transplant don't them? Belong. Why don't we transplant them and and uh, and plant them into the into that apron? Mm -hmm which they will dominate. And so uh, we were solving two problems. Two, two problems were each other's solution. The main reason I wanted chickens in the first place is that we were planting an orchard and chickens are very good at pest control. They, they work very well in a permaculture system. Well, when they started running wild like that, or foraging wild, we came to realize, among other things, that the raspberries, now, there's now a pest that has come in. That, uh, that, uh, it, it's a fruit fly that, that, uh, that lays its eggs in the, in the berries. And so if the berries fall down, they're basically breeding, uh, they're, they're breeding fruit flies. Well, the chickens come and they'll eat everything. But I've been interested in, cli in climate change since uh, Wallace Broker published an article in 1975 entitled, Are We on the Brink of a Pronounced Global Warming? And much of the uh, evidence that he, uh, he was presenting came from the oceans. And was able to, able to show quite, uh, quite clearly that uh, man-made uh, greenhouse gases were, were uh, new and major factor in the equation of, uh, of uh, global climate. Kathleen talked about making the decision to do something, to be part of the solution. The friends I visited today are all doing it, and they're doing it without making extraordinary sacrifices or huge investments. And taking that route is only going to get easier. Now where did I put those fudgy oat bars? Thank you for calling Honda Motor Works. This is Chris Schneider, President and Advanced Fuel Guru here at Honda Motor Works. I'm sorry I can't take your call, so please leave a message and remember, you'll love more miles per dollar with Advanced Fuel Vehicles at Honda Motor Works. Please leave a message at the tone. Hi Chris, this is Deb Nichols. Nick said you stopped by this morning. Uh, sorry I missed you, but glad you got out in the plug-in and heard about how well it's working out for us. Um, if I had anything to add to what Nick talked about, it's, well, 
you know how much I'm into conservation and efficiency. So I'm just really happy Honda Motor Works brought it all together. So those values are really reflected in what I drive. Just wanted to say thanks for involving us in your film project. I really hope it inspires others to find out more about solar and plugins and how it can all work together. Um, so take care, Chris. Bye bye.